NASA captured a terrifying event on Pluto. Since its discovery in 1930, Pluto has been cloaked in mystery. Until it was downgraded to a dwarf planet in 2006, Pluto was thought to be the ninth planet in our solar system. But the veil has been lifted owing to NASA's ambitious New Horizons flyby in 2015, and astronomers have continued to show that Pluto is much more interesting than previously believed. And recently, NASA just captured a terrifying event that reveals Pluto's dark side. Let's uncover this event. Hey guys, welcome back to Beyond Unknown. Today, we'll be taking a look at a mysterious event that just happened on Pluto. Make sure to stick to the end of this video as we have a lot to cover. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like today's video. It helps us a long way. Since Pluto's discovery in 1930, researchers have made great efforts to learn as much as they can about the tiny astronomical planet 4.6 billion miles away. Because of advances in technology, we have been able to continuously improve our understanding of Pluto, learn new things about its size and distance from the Sun, and even track changes in brightness. Scientists were particularly interested in clarifying and improving Pluto's peculiar orbit. While researching Pluto's orbit in 1978, James Christie became aware of a strange blob protruding from the planet's side. Christie and his crew could see that this blob would return to the same location every 6.39 days, proving that there wasn't a malfunction with the equipment. Christie and his colleagues kept checking to see if their interpretations of their observations were accurate using old pictures of Pluto. It was revealed that they had verified the discovery of Charon on July 7, 1978. Our solar system's planets and moons have mythical figures as their names. In the case of Charon, the term is derived from a ferryman who crossed the river Acheron with souls. Acheron is one of five mythical rivers that surround Pluto's underworld, which is named after a Roman underworld deity that is also known as Hades in Greek mythology. But why this particular ferryman on this particular imaginary river? Charlene, the name of James Christie's spouse, isn't all that dissimilar from Charon. Scientists have continued to investigate Pluto and its moons in the 40 years since Charon's discovery. The New Horizons spacecraft flyby of the Pluto system in July 2015 revealed that Charon is no longer a blob hanging off the side of Pluto. It is its own spectacular world. Charon is also one of Pluto's five moons, not just its moon. Five. As New Horizons approached Pluto, scientists worked hard to ensure that the spacecraft could fly through the Pluto system safely, collect data, and be healthy enough to spend the next year sending that data back to Earth. The entire Pluto system, including its moons Charon, Styx, Nix, Hydra, and Kerberos, with all their wonderful complexity and strangeness, adds to the inspiration of Charon's accidental discovery. New Horizons revealed a world unlike anything we had ever seen when it sailed 7,800 kilometers above Pluto's surface. Mountains, low plains, and even a thin atmosphere were present. It was very different from the chilly, motionless environment that had been portrayed by artists down the years in their impressions. It was a startling discovery. And among the most intriguing images that were returned to Earth was one that hinted at the potential existence of cryovolcanoes, also known as ice volcanoes. According to Kelsey Singer, a planetary scientist at the Southwest Research Institute in Boulder, Colorado, and deputy project scientist on New Horizons, at the time, we got back little chunks of images, either smaller images or parts of images first, because we couldn't get all the data back at once. And it just so happened that one of those postage stamps that we got back did happen to have part of this cryovolcanic region in it. These volcanoes would not resemble those found on Earth. They would be fed instead by water ice and other volatiles such as nitrogen, methane, and carbon monoxide. Even so, there was some debate about whether the images were correctly interpreted. Now, a new study released on Tuesday in the journal Nature Communications offers additional proof that the odd cryovolcanoes, which are around 7 kilometers tall and roughly 10 to 150 kilometers broad, are found in the frozen globe. Singer, the study's lead author, stated that now that all the data has been recovered, we can use all of those bits of information together, and that includes not just the photos, but also the topography that's built from the images, because your eye can sometimes fool you, so the topography forces you to be honest about what the features are. 
Although not exactly like the ones we see on Earth, these amazing volcanoes do share some characteristics with them. It is thought that the material that these volcanoes produce, likely some water ice, although there is also nitrogen, methane, and carbon monoxide ice on Pluto, is brought to the surface gradually by some kind of internal heating mechanism, rather than erupting violently with lava, rock, and dust spewing into the sky. However, something about their findings needs to be clarified. According to Sinker, the features on Pluto must contain at least a significant amount of water ice given the composition data and the way they are arranged. And that's hard to explain because you still need those things to move around and it effectively needs a heat source. There are various methods for obtaining that heat source. One comes from a moon or planet's stony core when components are broken down. The heat may not be released until it's trapped again. Another method involves tidal heating, in which a moon orbits a planet in an elliptical path. The moon can be squeezed, much like one might squeeze a stress ball, because of the difference in distances, which results in warmth. Some of Saturn's moons, including Enceladus, exhibit this. Pluto's relatively small core may be the source of the heat that is pushing up the mixture of water and nitrogen ice because it is too far from any massive body to get this tidal heating, and it's possible that there are additional factors involved. It wasn't a thin flow, so Singer said, we think it was probably like a very slushy blend of ice and water. Or it may have been kind of like ketchup, which is, you know, very liquidy, but can still flow. And we assume the extrusion came up from below. If you imagine something that keeps extruding, it will eventually form a dome, and then that dome will sort of spread out and relax, kind of like if you had a ball of Silly Buddy and you place it on a table, it'll slowly relax. The latest research also raises the possibility of an ocean 100 to 200 kilometers beneath Pluto's frozen crust. However, not everyone is certain that cryovolcanism is to blame for what we are seeing on Pluto. According to Catherine Nish, an associate professor at Western University who specializes in planetary surfaces, especially moons of the outer planets, so sure, there is this topic of cryovolcanism. And quite honestly, I'm not convinced it's very common, because it shouldn't be. Think about it. You have an ice glass of water. If there's some ice in it, what does the ice do? It floats, right? So the water is stuck on the bottom, the ice is stuck on the top, and it's really hard to get that dense water up and over the less dense ice. Singer, though, is certain that the evidence is consistent with the hypothesis of recent cryovolcanism, at least in terms of astronomy. These eruptions, in her opinion, could have happened as recently as 100 million years ago, and the possibility that they are still happening remains. In some ways, according to Singer, Pluto is still a mystery, and there is a lot of unanswered questions. Approximately 40% of the entire dwarf planet is included in the photographs that were returned, and by getting a better view of Pluto, astronomers might find more of these places, which would help them calculate the amount of heat that might be required to form these cryovolcanoes. Singer states she is eager to share the more information about this far-off world. In addition to the countless moons that are located in the far reaches of space, it would aid scientists in their quest to learn more about our own solar system and its beginnings. Pluto is unique both in terms of its surroundings and its distance, according to Singer. And since it's not what we anticipated, we are forced to ask, what are we lacking in our models? Unfortunately, we don't have all the answers. And that ends our episode. We hope you enjoyed today's video. Please subscribe and leave a comment down below your own thoughts. And don't forget to like today's video. And we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for